Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today, game 2 of a best of 3 from the Zotac Cup. It is between Freya, the green Protoss player in the lower right position, and Revival, the red Zerg in the top right. The map, of course, in Tomb Valley, and it is a PvZ. Game 1 went to Revival in what was, well, it's what I can only describe as an incredibly tough game for both of them. There was constant aggression, constant dropping, attacks back and forth, advantages, disadvantages, all the way through. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in game two and whether they can maintain that. And the one comment I'd make about game one has to be that there was really quite equal losses on both sides. The point at which both players lost their third bases was huge, but Revival had taken a quick fourth and that is really what kept him in the game. And then the hidden expansion in the bottom right on Cloud Kingdom was great and finally had enough but neither player really went into sort of the end game army. Even though it was a 20 plus minute game, Revival especially stayed on Roach Ling for the entire game. Admittedly he had upgrades and tunneling claws etc but he never really transitioned past that. He never, he got the Spire up but no infestation pit, never getting any Corruptors out. Freya only towards the real end did he start getting up a sizable number of Colossus and Colossi rather he just got basically knocked back time and time again by Relentless pushing from Revival. And that was a really interesting style and one I'll be interested to see whether it's Mimic this time, but so far Freya already going for a different build. He's got his gateway down, getting a gas early, so it could be anything from a 4-gate to a 1-gate expansion, all viable. And Revival on the other hand, going for the standard. There's not much variation you can go for as Zerg against Protoss, unless of course you were to go for some kind of pull before Overlord. Otherwise you're, you're quite limited in that you either go for a 14 or 15 pull, or if you're feeling a bit bonkers you can go for a hatchery first. But for Freya it makes sense going a gateway first on this map, the reason being that it's a very difficult map to wall off, and especially when you've got the possibility of being in the vertical spawn positions, you can get a quick rush distance that can come back and bite you. So. It's good to see the variation in build for air adjusting to the map, which of course you always should do. And one of the ways you can adjust your build for the map, for anyone who doesn't know, is some of the key things you can look at is how easy your natural base is to defend. So how easy it is to wall it off for Terran and Protoss and for Zerg, how much space there is, how effective force fields are going to be, for example. And then also how much dead space you've got around your map. You can adjust for whether you need anti-air, whether you think drops are going to be likely, etc. So things to look out for there and things to consider if you don't know. And yeah, Freya, it's going to be a one gate expansion because he's got his cyber core down now. He's starting more gate tech. He's put the pylon down on the low ground, so now can go and position himself to take that natural nexus. Revival, he's nearly got his own natural up. He hasn't scouted too much. He saw that there was no nexus down here. He saw, of course, that there was a gateway first, so knows he doesn't have to rush out the four to five minute third. Gonna instead probably aim for about six minutes, but this one Zeta coming across over, it's not a huge amount of stuff. The Queen there with the four Zerglings will easily be able to deal with it, and the advantage Revival has is he's only got to defend this naturally, he doesn't have too much else to worry about. The Zealot straight away coming through though, a couple of shots off from the Queen, a little bit of micro on the Zerglings, should mean that Zealot's forced back, as we're seeing straight away, it goes right out of the picture, and the Zerglings are gonna actually be able to pick it off without apparently losing anything, which is great in terms of engagement, with a Stalk coming in, this could add a bit more of a problem, the Zerglings straight away gonna have to run back, a few more in production speed, just starting now for Revival, because you did get that earlier gas than you sometimes see, that means the two base plays are gonna be a possibility, the Nexus half done at the moment for Freya, so Revival could go for some aggression. It depends really when he takes this third base. He needs to take it sometime soon, otherwise he will have to be aggressive. We've got three more gateways adding on. That takes us up to four gates, which on two base, four base can four gates can very much add a lot of pressure in because there's not it's not an overcommitment because you've still got your expansion up. It's not a four gate all in like you see on one base. But you can still produce a good number of units and if a Zerg over drones it can add a lot of problems. So straight away we're seeing here revival being forced to make a spine crawler. And he's got this problem of Stalkers relentlessly putting on some pressure, and Stalkers are very good at putting on this pressure. The Pylon is going to come down as well now, so Freya really committing quite a lot to this pressure, but if these Stalkers get forced back too far, if the Zerglings are able to deny the Pylon, then it's not going to work out that well for our Protoss player in this situation. And he straight away picks off those probes, but there's another Pylon and another probe sitting back here. More Zerglings on the field, though the Spine Call are nearly finished up for the Zerg at the moment and well the additional pylons getting spotted the probe is gonna get stopped straight away speed finishes and that's gonna really put the end to any of this aggression because with speed out these stalkers are not gonna be able to 
get back safely. They are going to get surrounded and taken out exceptionally fast by the Zerglings, and that puts Revival in an amazing position. Work account wise, he's slightly behind, but with the two hatcheries up, with the two queens, he should be able to catch it up fairly soon. And look at this, a Baneling nest coming down. So are we going to see a big Baneling bust? It's a possibility. But look, there was a gap in the wall, but luckily, Freya, with the reaction speeds of a complete boss, manages to get those force foot sounding time. Because if those Zerglings had managed to make it into the base, it wouldn't have been fun. Of course, with the gateway wall off, it's going to take a lot of Banings to punch through that, should he want to. The, the sentries are getting pretty low on energy, neither have enough energy now for a force. So the gas is not there either to get out additional sentries, because the robotics facility was starting. Look at this, 11 Banings are on their way through. There is no, well, until then there was no drone production, just an awful lot of Zerglings coming out, more Banings. The Banings nearly done, this is going to be absolutely devastating, but it's quite all in-ish, because as we can see, Freya with a big advantage in the work account. If this doesn't do a lot of damage, Revival is going to struggle to come through this game, and straight away the sentry goes down, the Banings still coming in, punching straight through, and not too many Banings detonating on buildings, so that means a lot of potential aggression could come through into the probe line, and well, as we can see, we have got lots of probes gearing up, they've got to be so careful, this could do massive damage as it does a Big Baning Connect goes down straight away. These sentries are getting taken out. The Pylon depowers most of the production capabilities of Freya right now. He's trying to wall off as quickly as he can, but with his Urgling still in the base, it is never going to be too fun. <coughs> the gateways are getting taken down, and with that, the fact that they're unpowered is essentially one gate, which is getting Chrono Boosted, trying to produce enough to deal with this many Zerglings, but it's not going to be enough. There is the GG from Freya, and Revival takes the series 2-0. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you did enjoy, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment, and subscribe. I will catch you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.